Hey, what's going on? Really? Like my cousin Eugene? You're serious? And you guys are sure? All right. What's going on guys and welcome back to another video and welcome back to Pensacola, Florida. I'm going to be 100% honest with y'all. It's been crazy the last couple of weeks. We had Christmas, we had Christmas Eve, we had all those family holidays that you get to. And plus, we had like an Arctic blast in Florida. It's It's been nuts. Like it got down to like the low 20s here, 20, 21 degrees. Mom and dad had an external pipe on the outside of their house that I didn't know was there that ended up uh, getting frozen. We've lost some vegetation. As you guys can see right here, like mom's tomatoes did not make it. And typically it stays warm enough down here to have them. The broccoli, I'm pretty sure is gonna survive. Um, no issues there, but uh, it's been cold. Mala obviously survived, of course. So we've been kind of taking our time and making sure the animals are taken care of, all the external stuff taken care of. Like down here, they don't have like all the insulation and stuff on pipes like what you have up in the Northern states, Kentucky, places like that. So we had to make sure we went around, wrapped all of our external spigots, make sure the hoses was unplugged. I had to make sure all the water was out of the Mako. Like it's been wild y'all, for real. So we've attempted to fish on a couple of occasions um, with very little success. I, I think this cold snap, I obviously did not fish um, during the actual cold snap. I'm just not, I'm not hardcore enough to go out there and fish at like, 20 degrees and everybody's like oh you can still fish man just bundle up and go after the sheep's head well two things i ain't about that cold life because well i'm just not i don't like to be cold and number two i don't even really like sheep's head fishing that much and i know some of you are gonna be like oh what do you mean what do you mean you don't like fish i'm like guys i'm not i'm not big on the sheep's head fishing i i just it's not my fave i will do it sarah and i did go out yesterday and we attempted to catch some fish we had live shrimp we threw artificials I'll just roll a couple clips for you. Yeah, like I'm kind of like borderline frustrated and I don't get frustrated that easily. Are you getting a bite? Maybe. Couldn't tell. I was too busy admiring your beauty to know <laughs> if I was getting bit or not. Now I got that song stuck in my head and I've got like, I think I got such the wrong lyrics like going through my head. Like, you it's probably like, It's did. like a mashup of like four different songs happening right now. So while we're waiting to catch fish, you know what's happening with eugene this afternoon oh yeah are you as shocked about this as i am like i've never gotten a more shocking phone call in it, my it, whole it life did. It, it actually shocked me because i honestly didn't know what they were calling about at first i was a little bit worried and then uh when i realized what they were calling about i was like seriously like i, I don't <laughs> and i i really like i don't know like do you think he'll even accept Oh, for sure. You think he'll accept? I think he'll accept. All right. I mean, we'll see, guys. I like, we're, we're, as soon as we get done with this video, we are going out and we're meeting with Eugene, either at the house or at the office, or what, I don't know where, and uh, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to give him the news and we'll see what happens from there. Now, with the freeze does come a little bit of bad news. And as you guys can tell from the title, not everything survived the freeze. And unfortunately, if you guys tune in on Facebook, I did share a little reel the other day about ice fishing. And I am sad to report that Gunther the Bass did not survive the freeze. Um, not really sure what happened. This only got about two inches of ice on it. The water was flowing the whole time. He had shiners in here. Um, there's still a couple shiners swimming around that lived. So I'm really not sure what happened to him, to be honest with you, because he was perfectly fine. Then we got the ice. I, there was ice on everything, guys. Like, I'm not even joking. We had ice on Bayou Chico, which is salt water. I didn't even know salt water could get a layer of ice on it. Now I'm sure there was a lot of fresh water that had flowed in there, but y'all check this out. Y'all, this is certainly something I thought I would never see, but I don't know if y'all can tell, but there is ice on the water here in the bayou. I don't know how well you can tell. I'm trying to find, let me get the, the broom here so you can see. Y'all watch, see that? not a big thick layer but that is ice on the water right here y'all never thought i'd see the day where we would have ice 
on by Utico, but today is the day that we do. And the only other thing that we're really, really worried about is Phil. You guys can tell Phil is not in his best shape right now. I probably should have put a blanket over it. This is a very young tree. You guys know we planted this back in the spring. I think he's going to be okay because that one obviously looks exactly the same. Um, and I think it's going to come out of it. So I'm, I'm pretty confident that Phil's going to be okay. But with all that being said and the struggles with fishing and everything going on, I think I found the perfect thing to make a video about today. Now, as you guys know, a couple weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, something like that, I got a ton of fly fishing gear in, which I have no clue how to use. And everybody and their mama's like, don't go straight to the water with it. Take it out and try to learn how to do it in an open field or something like that. So guys, today, that's what we're gonna do. Now, most sensible people, most sensible people, they would go out and do this on their own with nobody watching. That's not how I roll. See, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring y'all along for the ride so you can see the struggle. I have never picked up a fly rod, not one time in my entire life, not once. So this is gonna be a challenge. I'm just, it's gonna be funny and it's gonna be a challenge. I can barely cast a spinning reel, let alone a fly rod. So we're gonna go out here to a field right down here by a park by the house and we're gonna get the fly rod stuff out and we're just gonna see if I can cast this thing. No hook, I'm not gonna try to catch fish. I just wanna see, Mila, like really? Mila's over there just rolling in dirt. going Like that's the last thing we need is a dirty dog in our house full of stuff that we got for Christmas that has just exploded everywhere. So let's go down to the park. Let's get the fly rod out and let's practice throwing this fly rod and just see what it looks like. Maybe, maybe I'll be good at it. Probably not, but let's go see. All right, so this is gonna be brand new because I don't even really know how to put this together. <laughs> Lots of pieces. There's gonna be, oops, that's gonna roll away. Um, do they, like, is instructions included? I mean, I surely it goes together like a normal fishing rod, I would think. It's in, like, at least four pieces. There's the end. I think that's all of them, I think. We're going to see. I'm pretty sure that is all of them, though. Um, okay, that's the seat. Let's put the reel on here first. <laughs> I haven't unboxed any of this stuff, guys. This is all brand new stuff. So I will say this Orvis stuff is really nice though. Like, I mean, I'm sure everything comes with like cases and stuff Ooh. like that, but this is, that's- So that's my color. <laughs> I knew you were gonna like that. Like you immediately got excited about that right there. Okay, so it goes on there like that, I think. I get it now. You get it? Fly fishing, cause you'd be looking fly. I don't think that's no. I, I don't think that's what's happening. That camera I'm looks shaking. really unstable right there too. Are you doing all right over there? Yeah, or? I'm doing good. All right, so that's gonna go there. Luckily, I do know how to put a fishing pole together. So, and the one thing he did say, and I, I'm sure all of them are like this. Again, I'm not familiar with fly fishing whatsoever, but he did say one of the good things about this is it's much easier to travel with, which I can already see. I can definitely see where. Um, this is a much easier setup. Now this is different. And I, I can't How long is that? I fly, well, fly fishing rods are supposed to be like. Yeah, but check out the eyes. Long. So you have normal eyes down here, but then when you get up here, and I'm sure that's normal. Um, that's a different guide system than what I've seen before. So um, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to loosen the drag a little bit so we don't get unspooled. Wait, is that the whole reel? Where's the real reel? No, this is the reel. What? This is it. I've never seen a fly fishing rod in person. I haven't either. I, well, I take that back. I did one time Brant used one on the boat um, and I saw that. So the one thing I do know, and I, here's the cool thing, man. So he sent me a bunch of books, um, which I have read several of them um, to kind of get the basics. I haven't read the more advanced ones yet because I was just kind of trying to figure it out. Um, but I think I'm gonna be able to do this okay. I, I, not even good at casting the spinning reels i told you guys there in the intro so i got faith in you baby. i'm not sure but one thing i am excited about i was thinking about this like the different places to use this i think one of the cool places to use this will be down in south florida with like the exotics and stuff um i think that'll be really really cool so we shall see if that's the case but i think that'll be a pretty unique place to use this is down on highway 41 in the canal so couple things again not an expert but showing you you do you have your fly line so when we cast normal stuff and this is all from my understanding this could be completely wrong 
when we cast normal rods and reels, um, you have your like weight, sinker, hook, lure, whatever you're using to add weight to be able to cast. With a fly rod, all your casting weight comes from the fly line. That's where all the weight's built in at, so. When I first started like looking this at this stuff this morning, it said tapered leader, and I was like, I, I was kind of confused, because obviously I know that tapered means going from bigger to smaller, and I was like, how's it a tapered leader? But it literally does just that. I mean, I know you guys can't see it on camera, you would have to be able to feel it, but it goes from like a really thick leader to all the way down to almost next to nothing down here on the bottom. So it, I've never had, a, that would be an interesting thing to use just in fishing in general, with a tapered leader. So Sarah looks like she's about ready to I say mean, something not intelligent, y'all. I'm just telling you right now. I'm just, when you started describing what tapered meant, I'm like, that's like my weight through the year <laughs> gets from bigger to smaller. You mean the other way, like smaller <laughs> to bigger? I'm not saying, oh I'm just gosh, saying. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. Sorry, I get tickled. Everything I've read up to this point has told me to start off with your line out, maybe like 15, 20 foot. So that's what we're doing here. I'm just laying it out in front of me. Um, at, like all the books I've read said this is the best way to start. And I know this is not what you would normally do if you were fishing, but again, I have never attempted to cast a fly rod. So what you guys are about ready to witness will be the first time ever. And it's not even a real cast. Now there is some water back here. So if we get to feeling froggy, we might go back here and toss it in the water once or twice. I will tell you guys, this is not a very good fishing spot. I fish here a lot never caught a fish so it would be suiting if we caught a fish today though so i'm gonna have sarah step back and get out of the way I, it's not sunny but i'm gonna put sunglasses on yeah. one of the number one things that they in all seriousness that they were talking about was when you start learning how to fly cast to wear glasses because it can kind of whip around you don't want to lose an eyeball or something like that so while we're not using our water lens today for sight fishing we are going to use our water lens to make sure that we are not getting hooked in the eyeball because we're not trying to live that life <laughs> might look like the most awkward thing ever but here we go do i need protective gear that was not bad that looked pretty good baby now, here's the problem though so this is exactly what they talked about you don't want your line to like get balled up like that the line should go be straight out like it was laying before i started so i did something wrong that's better that's much better we're gonna we're gonna give it a little bit more here just to see guys i might have this down That one wasn't great. That one was much better. And what I'm talking about, my line is laying straight out. So, and then if you want more line, you can just whip it like that. Guys, it's not, it's not bad. Like, I am not mad about that at all, for real. That went way better. And then if you want to start off with less line, you just kind of pull your line in and let it go down here you hold your line up here with this finger and you let it in so like let's say i wanted to start off like light like this and then you pull it back and then you give it a little bit more and this is how you make those longer casts that one see this is what i'm talking about that one wasn't good i flipped forward too quick and it lined up in front of me that's exactly kind of what you don't want to happen right there here's my question this is one thing I didn't read, and I know you guys can help me out in all seriousness. So when you're doing this, well, one thing I didn't read, I don't know if you're supposed to let line go on your back swing, or if you're supposed to let more line go on your front swing, if you're trying to add more line. So, and what I mean is like when I'm back here, is that when I let that go, or do I let it go in the front half? That I didn't read. So if you know the answer to that, leave a comment down below. Like if I'm letting line out, if I want to let that line out on the front or the back swing, right now I'm going to get a little bit line in because I think I let it get way too long. I've got like 30 foot of line. But guys, I'm not mad about how this is going. All right, I've become very, very overconfident. I'm just telling y'all right now. I was going to go down here and fish, but I can tell you guys this is not a great place to fish. It's, it's just not. So what I do think I'm going to do is maybe take it over to a little pond where we caught Gunther. I mean, why not? Since we lost Gunther today, that's a wide open space. I think that would be the perfect spot to try to actually put a line in the water the very first time fly fishing. Let's go. Got my line laid out, came over to this little pond. I want to like stretch right here. 
the expectations are extremely low okay like i'm not really expecting to catch a fish but i did kind of want to throw it on a water just to see what happens so we do have a bass lure tied on there um a fly fishing bass lure so we're gonna see what happens here and we'll catch you guys on the other side i guess I'm able to keep it off the ground, which that was one of my biggest concerns is I didn't know if I was going to be able, that was a good straight line cast. I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to keep it off the ground or not. Um, and I've been able to do that. So no complaints guys, seriously. Another huge shout out to Mr. Page for sending this stuff over. Sincerely appreciate that. So we're gonna make a couple more casts and then we're gonna take it back to the house because as you guys saw there at the beginning, I got a phone call this morning about old Eugene. And I'm not going to lie to y'all, it was a shocker. Like, Sarah already knows what it is. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm blown away that, like, I don't even know what to say. I really don't know what to say. I cannot believe I'm legit about to do this. Hey, Sarah. Yeah, babe? Can you holler at Eugene and have him come in here? <laughs> yeah. Eugene! Rodney's here. What's up, old son? Hey, you finally gonna have me on that podcast thing you always doing? What? No, why would I have you? No, you're not gonna be on the podcast. I do the podcast for creators. What you mean I don't create nothing? I create all kinds of essential oils and sell them online. That's all my family does. Eugene, online essential oils does not really count as content creation, but that's beside the point anyways. Look, I have to talk business with you, which I can't believe I'm even letting those words come out of my mouth. What, for real? We gonna invest in some Natty Light? Eugene's all about Natty Light, crack a cold one. What, no, Eugene, why would we invest it? You invest in Natty Light every day. They take all of your money to begin with. That's not what I'm talking about. I got a call from my guys at Waterland this morning and I can't even believe I'm about to say this, but they wanted me to extend an invite to you to join the Waterland Fishing Optic team. What? They want me to be part of the Waterland team? What's that? Are they going to send me some of them cool cooker glasses like my dude Stale Cracker wears? That's that's exactly what, what they did. They sent you over some cooker Waterlands, which is the same ones Stale Cracker wears. That's really weird. And they, they want you to wear them in my videos, which is weird to me because these are my videos. Yeah, your name might be on the channel, but everybody knows what the people are here for. They're here for old Eugene. There ain't no doubt about that. Yeah, Eugene, I'm, I'm sure they're here for you. Half of them don't even like you, and the other half, I'm pretty sure they just tolerate you. The people come here to see, you know, me do stuff. <laughs> no, that's where you're wrong, old son. All the people that are here know everybody come here, bro, Eugene, and that PYT. Well, I don't doubt you about the PYT. You, you're probably right about that. I'm not going to lie about that. But, I mean, are you even interested in the deal? Do you want these? I mean, do you want to be part of the Waterland team? Heck yeah, I do. Why would I turn that down, man? Get you some free sunglasses. Be rocking a cool brand. I'll do that all day, every day, son. All right, Eugene, just do me a favor and try not to screw anything up while you're wearing those. You are representing a brand now, so you need to, you know, act accordingly. Oh, man. Man, this could, this could, hang on a minute, hang on. I'm, I'm gonna go and put these on. I can't do this in front of the camera because you know nobody, they ain't seen my eyes in like 12, 13 years or something like that. That's right. That's right, old son. You know what? This is, this is the perfect time. Did you know I'm about ready to make a, a huge announcement this week? What big announcement? I didn't even, what do you, how are you gonna announce something without me knowing it? about old Eugene, you know, Eugene Francis Wellington III, in case y'all didn't know, that's my full name. Not everybody knows about that, but oh, Eugene's about to make an announcement. This works out perfect, old son, perfect. Whatever, Eugene, just take the glasses. Please don't screw anything up. 
Have a good rest of your day. Guys, I, thank y'all for tuning into this one. I mean, I don't know. That's, there's really nothing left to say. We appreciate y'all being here. If you're new here to the channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button. This is your last chance to subscribe 2022 style. And then we're going to roll right into 2023 style. Guys, I can't wait to see y'all on the next one. Y'all take care. We'll see you soon. Heck yeah. Man, that's perfect. This is going to look so good when I announce that I'm running for...